Hi students, today we're going to be looking at a video presentation by a student whose name is Jamie Dodger. My microphone is considerably closer to me today, so hopefully this will bring an improvement to sound and will not display that my voice is actually secretly annoying. You've just not been able to hear it all this time. Hey Spuds, how's it going? What's up? I hope you are well. It's Jamie. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, whether it's your first video or not. Welcome. I hope you're going to enjoy it or enjoy it as much as you can, given the topic, because today we are talking about a particular person. Well, not really about them. We're talking about what they said. And we're... Now, Jamie's talking about me, but he's referring to them. I don't see two of me. Do you? On my TikTok, it clearly states that the pronoun I want to use or to be used is she. I am a she. And Jamie is talking about a TikTok video. So I assume that he looked and right there very clearly under my name, it says she. So I'm going to give him an X for that. And I am though going to give him an, a check mark, which means good because he is attempting to talk about veganism a little bit, kind of, sort of. <laughs> that's that's one of the topics and the, he did do an oral presentation referring to me which makes it it uh possible to get out the vegan message we hope we're gonna unpack something they said and discuss why it was wrong who's they another time another another x for you but first, before I get into it, I want to do a little PSA because I was in two minds. PSA means a public service announcement. About making this video, to be honest, because I really think there's a balance to be struck between calling out behavior that should be called out on and then just giving people attention. And I want to make sure I'm calling out the behavior and not just giving attention. So hopefully this is me just calling out the behavior. You may have heard about the person I'm going to be talking about today. And I do genuinely think it's important to unpack her recent comments because her. Now suddenly I'm a her. Okay. Well, I'll give you a check mark because you corrected yourself. Then we can all learn and stop any misunderstanding or negative words or just wrong things being spread. But I also understand that many people do not want to see her having any more of a platform. So her. with that in mind, with wanting to call out the bad behavior, but realizing people are maybe sick of hearing about her and don't want her to have more of a platform. People are sick of hearing about veganism because they don't want to stop eating animals. They don't want to stop their bad behavior. That's why they don't want to hear from me because I make people feel guilty for their choices. There are billions of animals suffering right now in factory farms. Right now they're on, they are on death row. They are going through a Holocaust. I draw attention to that, Jamie. That's a good thing. And what I'm hoping is that by the end of this video, you will declare that you are vegan. Let's see. Platform, please don't go look into this person. Don't go Google her. Don't give her views. It's don't go Google me or give me views. Oof. Don't go Google me. Bad. Don't give me views. Bad. So what you're saying, Jamie, is you don't want people to find out about the rape, the torture, and the murder that the animals go through. I'm going to assume that you're not vegan. And I'm going to hope that by the end of this presentation, that you are going to say something that's good, that talks about caring about the animals. It's not worth it. I just want to discuss something she said. And please know that a lot of people are very unhappy with that vegan. So which thing are you going to discuss, Jamie? Of the over 2000 TikTok videos, are you going to be discussing all of the ones that talk about animals? Are you going to be talking about all the individual animals? About the pigs? and how they are kept in tight, confined spaces and cannot even turn around to see their own babies. It's like a nightmare that goes on there, Jamie. Are you going to talk about that? I hope so. Are you going to talk about how the male baby chicks, when they are born, and they are noted to be male because they cannot lay eggs in the egg industry, that they will be put in a blender and somebody will turn the blender on and murder them? Are you going to talk about that? I hope so. Are you going to talk about the cows, Jamie? and the sexism that goes on there, and how the mother cows are raped and forced to have babies against their will. They are raped, they, are, they, they, have, they do not give consent for sperm to be shoved into their vagina by some creep who thinks that this is okay. Are you gonna talk about that? Are you gonna talk about how the babies, if they're boys, are taken away from their mothers and put in tiny sheds 
where they can't even see any friends as soon as they are born, isolated, crying away from their mothers so that we can murder them and turn them into burgers and put them on, as meat on sandwiches. Are you going to talk about that, Jamie? I sure hope so. Are you going to talk about the girls and how they are put back into the cycle of enslavement, Jamie? I hope so. I hope you're going to talk about the important things, the main message that I'm out there giving. Vegan teacher for the way that she represents veganism. And the way that she discusses veganism and approaches it is not the way that a majority of vegans would do so. So that's absolutely right, because the majority of vegans, vegans are not actually even vegan. They are plant eaters. They eat plants. They don't care about animal rights. A true vegan is somebody who cares about the animals. That's what being vegan means. You do your the least amount of harm at all times to try to draw attention to their cause. My main objective for being on social media is to draw attention to their, their plight, their suffering, to get everybody to watch videos, documentaries, such as Dairy is Scary or Dominion Movement. And I'm going to tell you the, right now how to get to Dairy is Scary. You just simply type in Dairy is Scary. It's a five-minute video about how terrible the dairy industry is. You should also, Jamie, make sure that you watch Dominion. You can go to watchdominion.com, all one word, watchdominion.com, and watch what goes on with every single animal. It's horrifying, Jamie. I really hope that you educate yourself. Kindly do not paint all vegans with this same brush and assume they are all like that vegan teacher because they are not. I will be suggesting alternative people who are vegan for you to check out at the end of this video, so make sure. That's amazing. I can't wait to see who you recommend. I hope you're going to recommend actual vegans like Earthling Ed and people who care about the animals who on their channel, they are actually talking about animals. They are talking about the suffering of the animals. They are out there trying to save them or they're out there giving lectures about them. Let's have a look. I'm really looking forward to seeing who you, pub who you think is a good role model that you should send your viewers to to learn about veganism. Should you stick around for that? Right, with the PSA. I will. I will definitely stick around for that. I can't wait. By the way, we can get on with discussing what she said. I wanted to... Thank you for saying she. I'm wondering though, Jamie, why is it that you flip back and forth? Actually, you know what? Don't even bother to answer because I think the whole pronoun thing is just overdone. I really think it's an exaggeration. I think the P we should call people whatever pronoun they want, but it's pretty obvious I'm a she, no? Yeah, it is. And if it's not obvious to you, it should have been obvious when you checked my TikTok. Okay, stop playing games. To make this video because as a bisexual trans man who's had to come out three times. You're a bisexual trans man who had to come out three times. You had to come out three times. Okay. I saw this particular TikTok from that video. By the way, I'm also bisexual and I also came out, but just once teacher where she's basically saying coming out as LGBTQ is an entirely selfish act. And well, when I came out as a bisexual, I don't really remember it being anything troublesome or difficult at all. I just told people because I don't even know why I told people. I guess because at the time I wanted, well, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in a relationship and I guess I wanted people to know like, hey, I'm open if anybody's out there. Why else does somebody come out? Of course, it, it is true that if you come out of the closet as a member of the LGBTQ, and I did correct myself in, in a video, I don't know what video you're going to show, but I did say that at one point I said that coming out is an entirely selfish act, and that was because it was a one minute video. And in TikTok, you only have a minute to say things. What, what, I, what I would like to say that I, the error that I made in that video is that I said an entirely selfish act. This was in the context, though, you have to remember of several conversations. And what I, what I was trying to say is that it is a selfish act as opposed to being a vegan animal rights activist, which is about others. But of course, if you are coming out, you are also helping others to give them the freedom to come out. You are telling them that it's okay. You know, don't be, sc don't be scared, don't be shy. And everybody should come out. I think so. So anyways, let's have a look. I'm not sure what you're gonna say. And coming out as vegan is more special. And yeah, I think we should have a chat about that. 
Okay, I okay. I, I think what you're referring to is that video because when you're talking with the more special, again, it was that the person well, you know what, let's look. Because in the text box I think I know I think I know where you're going with this. In the text box that I don't know if you know how TikTok works, but that we what happens is if there's a white box, we are responding to a comment. And often these are things that have been going on one after the other in a series of things. So I hope that you looked at the whole context, Jamie, and not just picking at one video. I don't know how much you looked at my site. Maybe you never even bothered before doing this video to see what I'm really about because you don't seem to know my pronoun, so I don't know. <laughs> so let's go through the TikTok video together and unpack it, shall we? Are you ready? Coming out as a vegan animal rights activist, as somebody who cares beyond themselves is much more special than it is to come out as a member of the LGBTQ community. Coming out as a member of the LGBTQ community is an entirely selfish act. There it is. <laughs> I really hate this whole I'm more special because I'm X, whatever thing you are, and that makes me better than you. I really dislike that attitude. And why does it have to be a competition? There is no prize. It is absolutely 100% clear that animal rights activists are better than people who pay for the rape, torture, and murder of animals. How can it not be? Is somebody who is not racist better than somebody who is racist? Y yeah, you know that people who are not racist are better. That's the context we're talking about here. I know I sound like that person from Mean Girls, but Damien's like, she doesn't even go here, but I just want everybody to get along. I do too. I think it would be great. I wish we could all get along. Is that too much to ask? It probably is. I could bake a cake made out of rainbows. Uh, make, if you're going to make a cake, make sure it doesn't have eggs or milk in it, please. But addressing directly what she said, the most dangerous statement here is saying that coming out as LGBTQ is entirely selfish. Saying that somebody is selfish is saying that they're doing things that are literally just in their own self interest. In the context of wh the way I was speaking in this video, what I meant by selfish is, that it is for yourself. Now, I understand that you are using the term selfish as to mean a derogatory or bad thing. And that's that wasn't what I was trying to say. It's definitely not a bad thing. And I've always told everybody who is in the closet that they should come out because it does give courage to other people. So I just wanna make sure that you understand, Jamie, that in this context, I do actually agree with you, okay? And if I could redo that video, I have already said this before, but if I could redo that video, which again, it's 60 seconds, it's such a short time in which to give a message. And I was hoping that people would see all of the other videos around it. But but given given that, if I could do it over again, I would, I would say it differently. So you're right about that interest with no consideration for other people. And although in many ways coming out as LGBTQ is something you do for yourself, it is not selfish. But also as a general point, kind of slightly away from this, we are allowed to do things for ourselves without being called selfish. It is okay. Coming Again, by selfish, I didn't mean it in a bad way. Coming out is something that LGBTQ people often have to do to live their lives authentically as themselves, but it is an incredibly scary process to do and i'm gonna uh, agree and disagree with you here it can be a very scary process to do but like i said when i came out as a member of the bisexual community there was it was absolutely no big deal whatsoever nothing bad happened nobody freaked out everybody was like okay and that was it versus when i came out as an animal rights activist when i came out as a, a member of the lgbtq community Nothing bad happened to me, but when I came out as a member, uh, as, a, as an animal rights activist, I had people dox my phone number. I had 40,000 messages left. I had to change my phone number. You know what, what it's like, Jamie. You must have a, a cell phone. You have the same number for years and years. I'm 56. Imagine how many years I had that same cell phone number for. This is a bit sad, you know, change my number. But, you know, hey, we're animal rights activists. We got to put up with this shit. Um, what else happened? Yeah, people doxed my address. Now, it's not, a, it's not a mystery that I live in Montreal. People know that. But to deliberately post my address for the, with the intention of sending people here to my home to hurt me, to disturb my, my home, to, to, to try to scare my, my 80-year-old mother-in-law, to try to kidnap my vegan dog. Have, has that, any of those things happened to you, Jamie? Did you ever have dead body parts thrown on your lawn, Jamie? Did you ever have animal secretions thrown at your house? 
That's what happens to animal rights activists who are outspoken. Those of us who tell the truth and make others feel guilty for eating animals. And that's the reason I'm here. That's the reason I have so much attention is because I make people feel guilty because I want to start the conversation. Not because I want to make people bad. Not, that's not the main reason. It's just that I need to make them feel bad in order to pay attention, in order to look at the other animal rights activists. Do you understand? I think of myself as like a rock in a pond. I'm just throwing the rock in there and disturbing. You know, I'm disrupting. But then there's all these little ripples that can go. There's all these other animal rights activists and co vegan cooks and vegan athletes who can then, who then you can look at. You understand, Jamie? That's why I'm here. I don't think you understand that. And I think many people don't understand that either. And it would be great if instead of you telling people not to come to my site, that you told them to come to my site because you would be helping to save so many animals if you did that. On TikTok, I have all kinds of things. I have little songs. I talk about all kinds of things. You know, the animals. I talk about vegan dogs and how they can be vegan. I talk about how kids can be vegan, how parents can be vegan, how mothers who are lactating can be vegan. Because it's a fact, because the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has confirmed it that anybody can be, be vegan at any age and any stage of development. I hope you're vegan. From what I see, you're not. It's, it's clear you're not, but I hope you will become vegan, Jamie. And can come with very negative reactions and consequences, including harassment, bullying, verbal and physical abuse, getting fired from your job. Yes, you're talking right now as coming out of LG, as LGBTQ. None of those things ever happened to me. Nobody gave a shit. I mean, I'm a teacher, I'm a nurse, we had gay, lesbian, LGBTQ, trans students, uh, colleagues. It was not a big deal. They were treated the same as everyone else. Now, you might say that I live in a different neighborhood here in Montreal. I just live in a, like a normal neighborhood. I, I worked at many different schools. Every school that I went to, there, there was always some representation uh, from, and, and we talked about, um, um, you know, the rights and what the flag was about and things like that. But um, nothing bad ever happened, Jamie. So I don't know what you're talking about, really. I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't, it isn't hard for some people. And that's what I said in this video, which we're going to see, I guess. But coming out as an animal rights activist can be terrifying. I have students who have so much hate in their comment section, and they're only 13 years old, Jamie. All they do is just say, I'm vegan, and they get mass attacked. It's not okay. We need people like you who care about humans to come out and say, that's not okay. And to come into my comment section on TikTok and write down, that's cool that you're vegan, even if you're not. And way to go, vegans. I hope to be like you soon. Okay? So I want you to follow me, that vegan teacher on TikTok. And I want you to help out. You get yourself an account. You tell me who you are because you won't be able to write unless I'm also friends with you there unless I'm also following you. Because there's so much hate that I had to close my comment section there. Not because I'm afraid of it, because people give me hate all the time here in, on, on YouTube or it, on, I have other channels as well. But in that particular main teaching channel, I think of it as my school and I cannot have just everybody writing any old thing because I use the comment section as a way to educate people, as a way to send people to different links, different videos, documentaries and things, okay? So I would like you to be one of the people who helps out there. If you care about human rights, you can come there and help out the kids who are coming out as animal rights activists and encourage them. Many, many other things. And so selfish is definitely not the way to describe it. I think this statement shows a lack of compassion and awareness towards the LGBTQ community because what's being forgotten is that whilst coming out as LGBTQ is something that a majority of individuals will do for themselves, it does have a wider impact on and that's like I said, Jamie, in here, I agree with you. So I'm going to give you a check mark again for that because I agree with you. And like I said, if I could say it over again, I would have worded it differently. I think I wasn't really clear. I'm saying that people do come out. Let's face it. People come out initially for themselves. They're not thinking about others when they do, unless it's because they want to be in a relationship, in which case that's still about yourself, right? Come on. But I do understand what you're saying, that it's important to come out because it gives people the courage later on to come out also, right? So I think we agree on that.
on the rest of the community. It is a powerful act that can help many other people. I'm sure any LGBTQ person that you ask will tell you that seeing somebody else come out helped them and inspired them and gave them courage or helped them figure out their own identity. They were helped by somebody else coming out. How can that be selfish? Whether it's on a personal level with family and friends, people online or on a celebrity level like Elliot Page or Wanda Sykes. Is your agency's website builder driving you crazy? Don't get mad. Sorry about the ads. That. I don't actually know who those people design... are that he just talked about. Hold on. Courage or help oh, them shoot. figure out that. I was going to try to see who these people are. You know what? It doesn't matter. I, I assume they're stars that came out. I'm not really on the in circle of all the gossip of the stars, but. But yes, when people come out, it's good. I want to note something, though. When stars come out as vegan, people should never be excited about that. Because people do that as a fad. They don't understand that being vegan is about animal rights. And so if we see anybody and any star that comes out and says, hey, I'm vegan or I'm going to be vegan, every animal rights activist who's listening, just pay no attention to them. Just forget about them. You know, in the back of your head, you could be thinking, God, I really hope they mean it. But unless they are always talking about the animals and they are always trying to get you to watch these important documentaries, they're not vegan, really. They just like to eat plants own identity they were helped by somebody else coming out how can that be selfish whether it's on a personal level with family and friends people online or on a celebrity level like elliot page or wanda sykes Every individual who comes out as LGBTQ will help or at least inspire in some way other people to live their authentic lives. And that's incredibly meaningful to more than just one person coming out. Let's keep watching, shall we? <laughs> it's talking about you only. It's not talking about the things that you're going to do to better the world. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say something, Jamie, but I'll let you talk. As per the previous discussion, that is incorrect. There are a million things we can all be doing to make the world a better place. And one of Yeah. One of them is that you could be vegan. How come you're not vegan, Jamie? Do you think that your taste buds are more important than someone's life? If you know what goes on, how on earth can you live with yourself? Literally putting a dead body inside of yours when you seem to care so much about people's feelings and about justice. See, this is the thing that gets me. And this is why I made that video, because I was appealing to all the minority groups and the majority groups to be vegan. I basically go after everyone, Jamie. If you're a man, I will say to you, how come you're not vegan? Men are traditionally protectors. So why do you not feel a need to protect the animals? It's not like you don't have a store next door. You can buy lentils, tofu, vegan burgers, vegan pizza. You can buy rice. You know, everything is there. If it's a woman, I say to her, how come you're not vegan yet? You know how the females are treated, the cycle of violence that goes there. How would you like it if somebody ripped your baby off your breast and pinned you to a machine and stole your milk? All right. So I go after Men, women, and then, yes, I go after everybody else too. Members of the black community or brown or beige or any colored skin. And I say to them, if you don't like to be oppressed and you LGBTQ people don't like to be oppressed, why are you the oppressors? Why do you not make that connection? Hypocrisy, Jamie. Are you a hypocrite? I want to see you starting to make videos showing me that you have watched Dominion Movement, Dairy is Scary, and just for fun, go and watch The Game Changers if you want, which is about athletes, just so you can realize that it actually is true that you can be vegan. I want you to go and Google Earthling Ed and watch his 30 excuses. Just type in Earthling Ed 30 excuses. Actually, I have it here on my tab. Let me just show you. Okay? 30 days, 30 excuses. He talks about all the lies that people tell, the crazy things, and these are very short, manageable videos. Okay, Jamie? Go and watch these. And after you watch all 30 of them, they're about two, three minutes each. It's not any longer than watching like an episode of whatever your favorite show is that you guys watch. You know, watch them, learn from them. And then you will understand why I am here. 
Because like you, I care about suffering and I don't want suffering. All right, let's continue. Where are you here on my tab? Um, okay. One of those things is equality, understanding, and human rights for all minority groups and just everyone in general. Being out as LGBTQ is political in of itself. I wish it wasn't, but we are still at a point where it is. By more people... Same as being out as a vegan animal rights activist. Now remember, Jamie, vegans are born vegan. You were born vegan. Think about it. When you drank your mother's milk, did that belong to you? Yes. When did you stop being vegan? Is when you decided yourself to consume the flesh of animals. When you're a small child and your parents are feeding you dead animals, you don't know what they're doing. You don't know that an animal suffered. You didn't give consent to your parents like, hey, I want you to go and kill that little piggy over there and feed it to me. Because if you asked a child, if you put a child in a crib with a baby pig and an apple, let me know when the child will try to eat the pig and play with the apple. See, we're all born vegan. All we need to do is return to being vegan. Your sensory pleasure is no reason. It's not an excuse. If you like eating animals just for the taste of it, which is a sensory pleasure, just like your sight is sensory, right? Your hearing also and your taste, these are senses that we have. If you say, well, I want to be, I don't want to be vegan because I like the way the food tastes. And you're saying that your taste is more important than the rights of the animal to not suffer. So what if you liked watching an, or listening to an animal scream? Listening is another, is another uh, sensation, right, Jamie? So what if you liked hearing animals scream Let's not take you for a second. Let's take uh, anybody else, okay? So here, here, do you see this little piggy? Okay. Let's say some crazy person wants to eat the pig for a taste. You would say, no, 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 your taste buds are not more important than this cute little pig's life, right? But what if somebody said, okay, but yeah, but I want to do it just because I like hearing the pig screams. I'm going to stab the pig in the neck because I like hearing the pig scream. It gives pleasure to my ears. You would think that person is a psychopath, right, Jamie? Right? Who wouldn't? But what's the difference? Hearing, taste. They're both sensations. So the logical solution is that you will be vegan. And I'm hoping that you're getting it in you. You know what, Jamie? It takes a hundred clicks until you become vegan. I consider one click, and this is a theory that I have, that it takes a hundred clicks because I don't think that people become vegan overnight. I don't expect you to become vegan just like that. But I expect, I hope, that you as a compassionate man will have read what I, what's written on my shirt and hopefully that will be one click to you. You will think, what does she mean by a holocaust? What are the animals going through? What are they going through? How was it? How does it compare to what happened to the innocent victims of Auschwitz and what happened in World War II? Well, innocent, sentient beings were put into gas chambers. They were enslaved and murdered for having done nothing wrong. That's what we continue to do with the animals. The Holocaust never ended for them, Jamie. And I hope that this is one click for you. Now, maybe it hits your head intellectually, but maybe it hits your heart. I don't know. Maybe it just went whoosh right past you. I hope not. But that if it's one click, Jamie, then you only have 99 left. And maybe this whole video will just be one more. And then you'll have 98 clicks left. I want to ask you, oh, I'll ask you later being out as LGBTQ, prides and fights for equality get bigger and louder and stronger. This does better the world and it increases the rights of LGBTQ people everywhere. If nobody came out and if nobody shared their stories and their lives as LGBTQ people, then our fight for equality would not be where it's at now. Every single person who comes out adds to this momentum for equal rights. And yes. that sounds like bettering the world to me and not just doing something selfishly that only impacts yourself. Coming out as an animal rights activist is talking about the animals, others, not just you. In fact, it... When you come out as an animal rights activist, i.e. a vegan, 
It is talking about others and it is a completely unselfish thing. It's a completely unselfish thing to do. I do want to make it really clear that I have total respect for people who are vegan. It are you vegan? If you're not vegan, then no, you don't have total respect for people who are vegan. If you want to have total respect for people who are vegan, you will become vegan yourself. That's how you show respect. You don't say, hey, I'm so glad that you're not hurting animals, but don't mind me over here. I'm just going to slice them and shove them down my throat. That's not being respectful. It is something that betters the world and it is something that is unselfish to do, but I didn't. Good. I'm glad you're acknowledging that. I'm giving you a check mark for that. Good. Uh Oh, that's right. You did have a butt just now. I'm afraid. What are you going to say, Jamie? Don't blow it. I didn't choose to be bisexual. I didn't choose to be trans. They're just things that I am and I have no control over it. It's not selfish. Oh, really? Did I not just explain to you that animal rights activists do not choose to be vegan? We are all born vegan. We become forced. We are forced to eat these animal products against our will. I was born vegan. All I did is just return. Oh my God, I got this all stuck. I just returned to back to who I was at, was meant to be. Now you were born uh, in the body of somebody who you felt that's not your body, right? And you're trying to fix it to go to the body that you think that you should be in, right? Animal rights activists are born as caring people. We can't just decide one day we're not going to care. It's not a choice, Jamie. I tried. I cared about the animals. I was vegetarian and then I became vegan and then I, it was a long bumpy road basically. I'll tell you about it one time. But the, the, the long and the short of it is that I tried to not care. I really did. I tried, I said, oh my God, I don't want to be an animal rights activist, it's too exhausting. I don't want to care. I don't want to always be the, the one at the table who is 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 singled out and, and looks weird and is always talking about, about how sad she feels. I tried really hard to not care and I couldn't, okay? Can you try really hard not to be bi? Can you just try really hard? You can't, you just are, okay? I care about the animals. I cannot just go around and pretend. Yeah, I mean, I could. I could go around and pretend. You, A lot of people can go around and pretend they're not gay or LGBTQ, whatever, which one of those <laughs> compartments they see themselves in. But it's not that being their authentic self. And animal rights activists, they can suppress it and pretend like they don't care. But we are born vegan and you are too, Jamie. If you really are a caring person, then it's in you and you need to return. You need to not be selfish and you need to return and be vegan. For me to live my life openly as myself. And whilst it's also definitely not selfish to be vegan, as I've said, it is an unselfish thing to do. How do people think it comes across when they stand there and call a whole group within society selfish simply for living as themselves? Again, when I said selfish in that regard, what I was saying is that it is that people come out of the closet for themselves primarily. And I did say that if I could change the wording, I would be careful not to maybe use the word selfish because I understand that people take it the wrong way. They use it as a derogatory thing. And I definitely do not think that it's a derogatory thing or a bad thing to come out. And actually by living as themselves, it helps other people. And then on top yes. of that, saying that you're more special than them. That doesn't Again, we're looking at context here. The person in the comment, I, I tried to pull it up. I'm not very good with technology. Let me see if I kept the picture here. Because I tried to, I'm on my iPad here. Okay, I tried to zoom. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I tried to zoom in on the picture to read what it said there. And um, it says, the person says, the, the coming out as vegan is not as special as coming out as gay lesbian. So this person came out and said this. And I was responding. All right, it's not me who came up with it in as just like that. As coming out uh, as coming out as gay lesbian, as coming. Okay, sorry, there's a capital letter, so I thought it was a new sentence. Okay, I am lesbian myself. Vegan is a diet, not a sexuality. Okay, so I imagine this, Jamie. I have I have sixty seconds on a one TikTok to respond to that. There's it was loaded. Vegan is not a diet. The person said. Well, I'd already. I'd already talked about that in several other videos, so I left that. But what I would have said if I'd had longer on TikTok, I would have said, veganism is not a diet. It is not about food. It's not about you. It's about the animals. Being vegan is you try to do the least harm at all times. So that's what I was trying to talk about 
in that comment in that 60 second video. I don't know. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. All right. So let me sum up again in case it's not clear. If I could do that video over again, I'm not sure which, how I would change it exactly, but I would definitely not use the word selfish because I think that people misunderstood. What I meant is that you are initially coming out for yourself. And I say selfish, it makes it sound bad, but I'm saying you're coming out for yourself. And yes, you it will have a ripple effect, but it really is for yourself. And I think that anybody who says that, oh no, I'm coming out for that guy over there. I don't care about me. I think you're lying. I just don't think it's true. Doesn't really sound like a very special or selfless thing to do. Let's continue. <laughs> yes, I'm not saying it's easy in different societies, different religious backgrounds, but if you're in a religion that treats you badly, then just change religions. We've been over this before. Wow, no. Wow. No, yes. that's an absolutely horrendous take. Wow, nope. what? Um, <laughs> oh, that was so disrespectful. Oh, really? Nobody Why? Nobody should be made to feel like they need to change their religion. Nobody needs to feel like they have to change their religion. I am simply saying that if you are saying, again, we're looking at context here, Jamie, you really need to look at the whole of my TikTok and everything that I stand for there before commenting on one little thing. Um, what I'm saying is that people were writing to me and saying, my religion, I'm Christian, so I have to eat meat because Jesus ate fish. Does that make sense to you? Do you think anywhere in the Bible it says that you have to murder animals? Of course not. What about all the other religions? Think of them all, Jamie. All these people who want to keep eating animals, who want the flesh on their tongue, who are selfish because they want to do that. They were writing to me and saying, well, my religion says that I, I have to eat this because, you know, and I'm not going to start listing all the religions because I know what people do. They take things out of soundbite like you did. You just take a little portion of what I stand for and you twist it all around. My point is that if your religion is telling you to do something bad, change religions. Okay, what I actually think that you should do, and this is, I think, I think what you're trying to say is um, that what we should do is we should try to change things from inside, right? That's why you're horrified. Like, obviously, it would be great if, let's say, you are a Christian and you think, of, let's say, your, your minister or whatever is saying, yes, you know, uh, uh, Jesus ate fish, so we should all eat fish. Then you can sort of maybe, you know, work from the inside, stay as a Christian and go, excuse me, um, but do we have to eat fish? Like, could we all just, like, when we have a potluck here in church, just make a decision that we're not going to put any dead animals underneath this roof, anywhere in this church building? Can we just make that a rule? How about we all vote? Vegan meals only. You know? Can that happen? Yes. Do Christians do it? No. Why? Because they're selfish. And there are many vegan Christians who are not selfish. But if you are a person who is Christian or whatever other religion, and you think that that this is the message, then that, then, then what you should do, if you don't, if for some reason you're looking at the Bible and it says thou shalt not kill, and you think it says thou shalt kill, then you need to leave that religion because you're really not getting the message of that religion. That's what I'm trying to say, Jamie. Just because some people use it to justify their own homophobia and transphobia. It's not and never should be the responsibility of the person being discriminated against to change themselves to stop receiving hate. We should be working to eliminate the hate in the first place. Yes, we should stay within our religions and we should start working hard to eliminate the hate in there. If your religion tells you that you should circumcise a brand new baby boy, pin him down, rip off his diaper, bring a knife towards his private parts, start to cut off part of it because your religion thinks that God wants you to do that, you have two choices. You stand and scream at the top of your lungs, no, nobody's gonna touch my child. No way does that make any sense. Circumcision is clear abuse. And my personal feeling is that anyone who, who does this to a child should go to jail. It should be a crime. We have no right to circumcise females or males. We have no right to cut their genitalia without their consent. But if you think your religion is telling you to do that, then get the fuck out of that religion. Just leave. It doesn't make any sense to stay. Or you try hard, like I said, like many, for example, there, are, there is a group of Jewish women who are saying, we don't want to circumcise our boys and we will not do it. We will do a beautiful ceremony welcoming him into this world, but we will not be taking his diaper off and taking a knife to cut his penis. 
Okay? I hope it's clear. That's what we should be encouraging. Again, I think this is coming from a place of ignorance. Because the reality is, even if you're not religious, even if you're one of the most privileged LGBTQ people out there, you're still exposed to a huge amount of prejudice and discrimination simply for being LGBTQ. Huge amount? Where is this discrimination that I'm supposedly exper experiencing? Where is it? Now look. I ha I'm not sure how I feel about this. I really think that it's true that we can't just look at one person's uh, experience. It's like if somebody in any minority group says, well, as a member of this group, I think blah, 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 whatever it is, right? Yes, their experience matters, but they cannot speak on behalf of the whole group. And clearly, I cannot speak on behalf of all bisexuals, because if you're bisexual and I'm bisexual and we have completely different experiences coming out, then what do we do with that, Jamie? We realize that everybody is different and we don't make generalized statements, right? You. you can be white, you can be cisgender, you can be from a well-off background, you can be educated, and you can still be discriminated against and have less rights because you are LGBTQ. Again, I fully respect people who are vegan and learning more and educating myself more about what it means to be- Oh, you're going to learn more and educate yourself more. When exactly? When are you going to do that? Starting today? Start by watching Dairy is Scary. It's only five minutes long. Vegan, I treat the world a lot better and have significantly cut down the amount of animal products I consume and I'm always striving to do better and better. Good. You're cutting down. Why are you cutting down if you, if you think you need to learn more? If you already know what's going on, what's stopping you from cutting it out completely? What part of you thinks that it's okay to take a knife to a six-month-old pig? That's how old they are when we murder them after a lifetime of hell, terror, fear. They never get to play outside. They never get to see the sunshine. They are walking among their own feces, their own shit, their own urine. It's not okay. And it's not enough to just be vegetarian. You must be vegan. You must be because it's not okay what we do to the cows. Because even if you think that you're not part of a cycle of murder because you're, you're vegetarian, you still are. You're still paying for it when you eat eggs and when you eat dairy. So with that, I also realize and accept that vegans receive a ridiculous amount of negativity just for being vegan. It's not fair. They get rude comments. And that's not okay. Let's not do that. But here's the big difference. Thank you. I'm giving you a check mark for that. Good. You're not told you can't marry the person you love because you're vegan. You don't. We are extremely restricted on who we can marry because if we don't want to have dead animals in our home, it's not very easy to find a partner. It's very, very difficult. You think it's hard to find a partner in the LGBTQ community? It's hard to find a partner as an animal rights activist. There are there is such a tiny amount of vegans out there, and. When you are a vegan, no matter what your profession, if you are an actual vegan and you care about the animals, and you, which means that you are speaking out as often as you can, you are extremely ostracized in your place of work. The people who have good experiences as vegans are those who never talk about the animals and they're not really vegan. If you are, let's say, working for a big company, and your boss says, hey, we're going to have a meeting, but we're going to have uh, a big potluck. I mean, we're going to order in food. And, and the vegan stands up and says, you know, what? Well, can we just all can we just order only vegan food? Everybody can eat it. And that way I won't be exposed to looking at dead bodies on the tables. <laughs> what do you think happens, Jamie? Think the boss says, oh, yeah, sure, of course, because I care about your feelings. You know, that's not what happens. Usually the boss kind of rolls their eyes and says, well, okay, I'll get you like a salad or something, which misses the whole point, right? But an animal rights activist would talk about the animals and somebody who only eats plants would just think about themselves only. Animal rights activists are there to educate people and to try to teach compassion in the workplace. It's not easy. There are even many vegans who go to their doctors for help and they find out that their doctors don't know the first thing about veganism. They don't even know 
about the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and their statement. They are so uneducated. They get so few hours of education. Vegans are constantly discriminated against. In school, when a kid says that he's vegan, his classmates will wave some bacon snack that they had in their faces and laugh. And that kid, who is the victim, knows what happened to that pig. And if that kid starts to cry, can you imagine the ridicule they get? And what do you think the teacher does? The teacher who is eating a salami sandwich at lunch, do you think she gives a shit? Who's there for those kids, Jamie? It is very difficult to come out as an animal rights activist. And the LGBTQ community needs to know that, and they need to change, and they need to be on our side. They need to be vegan. They don't have to worry about being fired or put in jail. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Because bosses will find other reasons to fire them. They will think, well, this person isn't part of the team. We can't ever have fun. You know, we can't just like, you know, buy a cake and serve it to everybody at coffee hour because, oh, we got the vegan over there in the corner. So then they'll start to find other things and other reasons to fire them. Just like what happened to an animal rights activist in England who was fired because of his strong, fe strongly felt beliefs, and who, by the way, won his court case. And now veganism there is considered to be, um, I'm not sure how you call it, I have to research it, but basically you're not allowed to discriminate against vegans anymore in the UK. You can prove that it was discrimination just like you can pr prove that something is homophobia or racism, and that's the way it should be everywhere. Vegan phobia is a thing, and one of my intentions is to raise awareness of vegan phobia and to make sure that it is included just like homophobia and just like racism. The discrimination is all the time. It's all the time, Jamie. If you are an animal rights activist, it's everywhere. If there's a kid at school who is trying to stop his classmates from stepping on ants and he is discriminated against because he's trying and he's trying to stop the murder taking place, that kid will get punished. And said, ah, let the kids kill the ants, whatever. You know, a good teacher might say, okay, just stop. But what should be the protocol is nobody kills animals on the schoolyard. And no animals dead should be allowed inside the school. Every single school cafeteria should be 100% vegan. There should be no milk, no eggs, and no dead flesh anywhere in a cafeteria. And same as a hospital. Hospitals should be 100% vegan. They should not just have a vegan option. The whole place, the entire facility, should not ever have a truck drive up to the door with any eggs in it, milk in it, cheese in it, yogurt in it, or dead animals. Are you going to help me to get that, Jamie? I hope so. Male or even murdered just for being vegan. A child in England committed suicide because he was harassed so much. He was bullied for being vegan. He was 12. In my comment section, Jamie, I already said, there are many children who are abused just for being on TikTok and just for talking about it. And I have seen in my duets, if you know how, how it works on TikTok, is if say I make a video and I talk about how oh, parents, you should help your child be vegan. Do you know what some parents have done? They made a duet of it and pretended that their kid came out as vegan and they took the kid and their school bag and they threw them out of the house. I mean, it's just a reenactment, right? But it's a joke, a joke that they would kick their kid out for being vegan. Sound familiar? I would say that it's easier to come out as a member of the LGBTQ community to your parents than it is to come out as a vegan. I mean, to really come out as a vegan. I mean, of course, at first, your parents are going to roll their eyes and say, oh, it's a phase. But if the kid stays vegan and, in, and refuses to eat dead animals, parents beat them. They don't let them leave the table. Why? Because that kid is making them feel guilty. That kid is showing a mirror to their parents. And the parents hate it. Vegan phobia is everywhere. It needs to stop. Vegan. I understand that vegans can face hate and negativity, but the stats of LGBTQ people receiving verbal and physical abuse for something they can't control. Do you, do you know where the stats are for these kids who are getting abused in their home? 
Where are these stats? They're nowhere because we cannot see them. Kids are not going to their teachers and saying, hey, my dad just sat me and forced me to eat uh, a, a dead a steak, you know, a, a dead cow on my plate. He forced me. What would the teacher do? Yeah, okay, whatever. You know, you got to eat your protein. You know, where is the kid supposed to go for help? You think a kid's going to say, "My, I refuse to eat the steak. A, like a 15-year-old, okay? A 15-year-old girl, she doesn't want to eat the steak. And she gets hit on the head by her dad. Smacked. Think she's going to go and what, tell her principal? Who the fuck is she going to tell? It's everywhere, vegan phobia. It is dangerous and it is wrong. And it's not okay that you downplay it. And for simply being LGBTQ is ridiculously high. And it's not something that's comparable. Okay. First of all, anything is comparable. It doesn't mean it's equal, but it's comparable. And I would say, again, that if we are to compare these two things, that coming out as an animal rights activist is much harder. Much harder. Okay, shall we finish this video now? But look at my comment section. Think of how terribly vegan animal You're rights You're getting an X for that. Not just me. All of them. Do better. Be kind to those who are being kind. I do agree. Be kind to those who are being kind. Show respect to fellow human beings. Your comment. Show respect to fellow human beings. Show respect to fellow human beings. But not to sentient beings. Not to pigs, cows, chickens, and lambs. They feel like us, Jamie. They want to be with their families. They don't want their skin ripped off. Why would you just say, show respect to fellow human beings instead of all beings? You're getting an X for that. Comment section might be rough, and that's horrible. But let's just remember that one characteristic about you does not make you an all-round, amazing, kind, wonderful, selfless person. Just because you're vegan, it doesn't make you the best person in the world or the no, you're absolutely right. It doesn't make you the best person in the world. But you are stopping the murder, the torture, the rape, the confinement, the sadness, the fear, the terror of hundreds of animals every year. And by being a vegan and by being a rock that is thrown into a pond and the ripple effect that it can have, you're making a huge difference. Vegans who are true animal rights activists are amazing people. It doesn't mean that they're amazing in everything, but they are not thieves. Do you understand why I'm saying that? You are a thief, Jamie. What are you stealing? What do you steal every day? You steal the lives of animals. You steal their body parts, milk, eggs. Animal rights activists don't steal several times a day. Stop being a thief. The most special person. You can't go online and tell people to change their religion and say that coming out. You can tell people to not stay in a religion if they misunderstand that religion and think that their religion is telling them to hurt animals. Yes, you can. You can, and I've done it. And I will do it again. Now, living authentically as yourself when you're LGBTQ is selfish, all whilst preaching kindness to others, comparing negative comments that you receive. I don't even know what to say about that. Uh, you're, you're literally trying to preach about being kind, and you yourself are taking part in so much suffering for the animals. You need to change. I'm putting another X here, Jamie. It's not okay. D for having a controversial online presence and also happening to be vegan is very different to the negativity that LGBT plus people face. It's like trying to compare apples and oranges or I'm looking around my room to think of things. Cups. Why can't you compare apples and oranges? Let me show you. Apples and oranges are both round. They are both fruits. They are both juicy. They are both foods. I've just compared them. Am I saying they're equal? No, but you can compare anything. So what you're saying makes no sense. You're getting an X.
hips and desk legs. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to be vegan, that's great. You are doing a great thing. But there's more to being a kind and selfless person than being vegan alone. Just like simply being LGBTQ does not make you a wonderful, kind person. There are so many different things that make up people and so many different things that contribute to people being kind and selfless and treating others with respect. To end this video, I want to again discourage everybody from going and checking out that vegan teacher. So you want to discourage people from seeing me talking about how we can all save animals. Two X's for that. I hope that after you watch this, if you do watch it, Jamie, you will see how ridiculous that statement was that you just made. It is important to call out bad and damaging behavior and explain why it has upset so many people, but we should also not be going over and leaving mean comments. There is a way to address these things respectfully and calmly, which is what I wanted to do in this video. I would strongly encourage- Thank you, I'll give you a check mark for that. You're right. Encourage all of you to go find alternative creators to hear from about veganism. I agree. You should all go find vegan animal rights activists. Go for it. There are many of them out there. And support them instead. One online creator is the Queer Kiwi. Shut the Queer Kiwi. The Queer Kiwi. Okay, let's see what you said. She did a great video on that vegan teacher from the perspective of somebody who's both vegan and LGBTQ. So definitely go check that out. I've left a link down below. So yeah, that is everything. For okay. So you said you were going to show, uh, at the beginning of the video, you said you were going to name several. And you came up with one who is not even vegan? Let's see her site. Okay. Animal rights activists, they talk about being vegan. Let's have a look at her site. The first video, something about conservative... What else do we have here? Sir, let women enjoy things. Okay, do you see anything about animals there? Talking about being gay again. Twitter's worst misogynist. I don't, I don't see anything here. Respecting, talking about straight people, talking about gay. Queer her story. Does this look like an animal rights activist to you guys? Sir, that's not how women's, okay, no. This is what you could come up with, Jamie. Huge X again. You literally sent people to somebody who eats plants, who doesn't talk about veganism in the last many videos that are right posted on the top of my, my page here that I see. Okay, we got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Out of the last 10 videos, not one about the animals. You really don't get it. Again, I'm going to tell you, you can go and see Earthling Ed. Go and see his site. I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch because it's not boring. It's just that I know you will not watch them all. But I will put them in the links. In the links, you will be able to find the animal rights activists who have done amazing things. They have rescued animals. They have lectured at universities. They will talk to you about the science behind it. They will talk to you about every individual animal. If you watch Earthlings, if you watch Dominion Movement, if you go to Earthling Ed's site here, this is one thing you absolutely should do, Jamie. Okay, don't come back to class unless you educate yourself. Don't bother making another video until you've actually learned all of this stuff and you have been vegan for at least a month. After you've been vegan for a month, I want you to try Challenge 22. The link is below. You sign up, you get a mentor, they're going to help you. And, it, and here is further proof what a terrible animal rights activist Queer Kiwi is. Are you vegan because of her? Why not? If she's such a great animal rights activist, Jamie, why are you not vegan because of her? Unbelievable. Let's count. So here was your score. What do you see? Definite room for improvement, right? I told you what to do. 
I expect you to do it before next class. Try to look at my channel on TikTok to know exactly what I'm about. Tell your audience in a month that they should check out the channel, that they should look at all of these things. And I want you to tell me that you are vegan. I want you to tell me that you have become vegan. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to throw out every single piece of leather in your house overnight, okay? It just means that you are on the road to getting there and you are serious and you're not going to buy any more products or put anything else in your body, okay? If you have some cheese in the fridge, I'll give you permission to finish that. You can finish your cheese, you can finish your milk, finish the stuff that's in your home. You don't have to throw out your leather shoes. You don't have to get rid of your car if it has a leather seat, okay? But your, 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 your heart is with the animals and you're going to stop paying for the rape, torture, murder, exploitation from now on. And you will tell your audience in the next video that they should subscribe to this channel. They should. Because there's no reason why human rights activists and vegans can't work together. We should work together, okay? I look forward to your next video and I look forward to giving you way more check marks than X's. I know you can do it, Jamie. To everybody who's been watching, thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.